sits open behind him. Stage right of him is a table with a half-eaten loaf of bread, a bottle of red wine, and two glasses sitting on it. Mona Lisa seems to be staring out the window. Leonardo cleans his brush in a jar of water, and finally, Mona Lisa says, Leonardo, why are you always so quiet? Lisa, I am sure you understand that what I am doing takes the utmost concentration. And I am not to be bothered with mundane things such as idle banter. It will distract me from my ultimate purpose. It's been five hours. Aren't you hungry? Come, sit with me. Without turning and facing the audience, Mona Lisa walks over and sits with Leonardo. And just what is have I not told you? Never. <laughs> well, it depends. I feel your portrait could be quite special indeed, for you have a very enigmatic smile, my dear. That will bring an allure, an instant aesthetic interest in the piece to the viewer. However, it will not be what makes it significant. Look at my palette. Are those colors really in my skin? No, dear. These are merely colors for the background, the, the sky, the trees, dirt, and so forth. For you see, I have placed a landscape in back of you, and that will make this portrait different. Leonardo, those trees are so small. Ah, but that is real. Look out the window toward the horizon, and you will barely see those houses and the cupola. Just before the vanishing point, objects are at their smallest. It's called perspective. It's as if I were looking out that window. Do you see all the trees that lead to the piazza? They are no different than the guidelines I drew. They give dimension and lead to a central point. All these techniques will help to create a, a more realistic and three-dimensional image. Even a person? Especially a person. The human body as a whole is an inorganic shape, but take a shoulder, and you could create an oval, a triangle for the trapezius muscle, and then a cylinder for the neck. You have a great fascination for my anatomy. I have a great fascination for lots of things. A desire for knowledge is ever a good man's basic need. I wish you'd let me read your writing. I told you all you have to do is hold it up to the mirror and its secrets will be revealed. And I shouldn't have even told you that. Lisa, the less you know about what I think, the better off you are. I am not a favorite amongst the clergy. What is it you say that upsets them so much? Well, the church finds the practice of sciences to be an affront to the natural order of things. Anatomy, for example. The best way to study the human anatomy with its myriad of internal organs is to see an actual human body, to dissect the corpse. I have yet to try for fear that they will stop me, for I have already been in trouble for other things I have studied and for merely saying certain things. Such as? I studied geology, and the stratification of rocks is vast, and who knows how far down the layers of rocks go. And for how long the layers of rocks have been building. There's more rock, I believe, that could have formed since the days of Adam. What are you saying? Nature is capricious and inconsistent. It, it, it takes pleasure in creating and, and in continually creating new forms. That's its very vitality. She knows that by new creation, her terrestrial materials are thereby augmented. And she is more fruitful in her creation than she is in destruction. Perhaps. Perhaps there was life, human life, earlier than the Bible says. That can be considered heresy. Oh, not you, too. All I am trying to do is open up people's minds to new ideas, illuminate and enlighten. I'm not saying I have all the answers, 
but I'm not mad, am I? Tell me. 